Michal. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, thank you for, for joining us today. So we're really excited to have experts in data security and storage from big players in the industry. You know, we, as you can see there, there's Nordstar Group, Backup Technology, Hitachi, Ventara. So we have uh, Frank Parent, Mike Alessante, and Fabian Mendez. So gents, welcome as well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, thank good. You. So before we start, of course, a brief housekeeping uh, for everyone. If you do have some questions uh, during this uh, session, uh, please do use the chat panel below, as you can see in there. Uh, we also have the uh, Q&A um, portion in there below, which uh, you can also uh, share your questions. And then later on during our Q&A, this uh, gentleman will answer your questions. Uh, at the same time, this... Um, session is also recorded so just in case you wanted to have some copy definitely we'll share that with you right after this call okay so without further ado of course the gents take it away <laughs> okay thank you uh folks on behalf of nordstar hitachi and backup technology i'd like to welcome you to our webinar and on video and data storage we will um here's what we'll be covering today We'll, I'll introduce our panel. Uh, we'll talk about what's driving the need for more storage. Uh, Fabian will take us through so a real world example of a local customer in, in Houston, Texas. Uh, we'll talk about solutions and long term backup of the data you collect. So I am Frank Parent. I'm a senior account rep at the Nordstar Group. Fabian Mendez is with Hitachi. He is a local territory account manager here in Houston. And Mike Calsante is the CEO of Backup Technology. So the Nordstar Group. So we're a systems integrator. We have relationships with most of the major players in the, uh, in the IT world. We do software, we do applications, we do infrastructure. And um, what we like to do is work with a customer uh, understand their needs, recommend a solution, and we've got um, a large number of customers, happy, satisfied customers that we've become the trusted advisor to. Um, we try to uh, conduct our business on a personal approach with honesty, integrity, and we want to deliver consistent and effective solutions to our clients. Backup technology, obviously, uh, like the name says, they specialize in backup recovery, business continuity in business since uh, 2005 with a long tracker, track record of helping uh, people with their cloud services. They've got over 300 technicians globally and their specialties, mass data fragmentation, data governance, compliance, and resiliency to ransomware attacks. And we all know um, what, how disruptive those things can be. Hitachi Vantara, a provider of mid-range to enterprise storage. They are trusted by 81% of the Fortune Global 500. They are 106th uh, in rank of the Fortune Global 500. And uh, to show that they're an innovative company, they are number one worldwide for patent applications in big data analysis foundation technology. So why are we here? So we wanna talk about the need for more storage. What's driving that? Well, video is one of the big drivers and you'll see video in customer service, business intelligence, training and security. And our focus today is gonna to be mainly on security. Uh, we Video security, recorded footage, especially in an education environment. For example, the Texas Education Code says any video and audio recorded in a classroom has to be retained for at least three months. Different states, different jurisdictions have different regulations. So check your local codes. If you've got a large school or campus, you can theoretically have hundreds of cameras positioned around the campus and all of those are generating data. So how much data do they generate? Well, one camera recording 1080p streaming at two megabits per second generates about 20 gigabytes a day or 600 gigabytes a month. A one terabyte hard drive can hold up to 500 hours of high def 1080p video, which is just over 20 full days. So 
you're looking at this and you're saying, how, you multiply this by a lot of cameras. If you've got, let's say 30 cameras, over a month, you can generate 126 terabytes of data. If you've got 100 cameras, you could be up to 420 terabytes. And if you've got 500 cameras, which in a campus environment is not inconceivable, you could generate over two petabytes of data. So what do you do with all this data? Once you've got it, where do you keep it? And that's where Hitachi comes in. So Fabian, I'm gonna stop my screen sharing and turn it over to you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Frank. You're welcome. Let me get that share stopped. Pause share. Okay, it's all yours. Perfect. You guys should see my screen now. Um, and with that being said, I want to start with a very quick introduction of Hitachi and our unique capabilities. Um, uh, we've been in business for more than 100 years at this point. Uh, we started with uh, the OT side of the house. So think industrial construction, machinery, uh, all sorts of things in the real world, if you will. But we also have more than 60 years in the IT infrastructure side of the house. What we can bring as a multinational conglomerate, true manufacturer of, of things around the world is connecting the dots between you know, the physical space and the cyberspace, which is connecting uh, the dots and coming together with unique solutions for the IoT space. And we've been doing that for quite some time now with the help of both sides of the house of our organization. Um, for those of you that would like to know a little bit more about organization, Hitachi's got more than 900 companies. I know we see 879, but that's up to 900 at this point in all sorts of industries. We've got transportation, water processing, we've got healthcare, heavy equipment, um, robotics, IT, obviously, energy. Really, the sky is the limit with the amount of one first-hand experience that we've got in multiple industries, research and development, patents, and supporters that we have around the world to serve our customers. And just like we serve our customers, we also create a lot of these solutions for our own organizations out of the need of a different, better, more innovative solution. And that's where a lot of our new technologies come from, come from talking to each of these 900 companies and figuring out what are some of these organizations facing um, and how we can come together as a group to, to solve those challenges. We have a multitude of industries that we participate in. This is just a few of them, um, broadening what I showed in the previous slide but it's really a true multinational uh, conglomerate that uh, has a far reach and uh, a considerable say in how technology evolves. I particularly represent the IT side of the house, which is Hitachi Vantara. And we don't do this by ourselves with those 900 companies. We understand that it's an ecosystem of organizations that shape the world of technology that we leave, live in. So that is why we work with some of the folks that you see up in screen and we've, we've been working with them for quite some time some of the facts that very few people know, Brocade, Broadcom, a lot of us know that we're, we're the largest reseller of broad, Broadcom in the world. So at the end of the day, sometimes we can provide supply where others can't simply because of our relationship with several of these uh, partners that we've we've been uh, growing together both as, as an organization um, and as, as a customer at times. So moving forward through these alliances, I wanna talk to uh, data challenges that we all face today. Um, this is a very uh, condensed uh, organizational structure. I think at the end of the day, you know, they are all equally important. None of them are more important than the other, but it all starts with the acquisition of that data. And that's where the cameras, the sensors come in 
storage and management. That's where Hitachi can help with one part of the business. But then how do you get that to other individuals? How do you keep that protected because of the sensitive nature of the information that you're storing? And beyond that, how do you enrich that data, connect the dots between, again, the real world and the cyber world to uh, extract further insights out of the data, monetize the data, be able to move a little faster in, in your industry, or simply serve your customers in a better way. And that's these are the problems that we focus in today. We go at them with uh, a number of products. This is a very light, um, but uh, still very encompassing view of our product portfolio on the Hitachi Vantara infrastructure side of the house. I know there's a lot on the screen, but what I wanna really speak to is, is our stories. Uh, we've got, uh, as a cloud story, we got hyper-converge. We've got strong partnerships with Cisco uh, that allow us to go over brand new products that nobody else can offer out there. At the end of the day, most of our customers live in the infrastructure storage and compute side of the house. So that's all the way to the bottom on the screen. And the beauty of all of this is that it runs on a single, very straightforward and simple um, platform our what we call op center which is what you manage what you use to manage the uh, storage and the compute it, it doesn't matter if you're using the low end or the high end that can literally run a small country uh, you you're going to find all the familiarities in the world between one and the other it's a simple seamless transition from one and the other a single uh, operating system for everything. Um, and again, this is just the start, the tip of the iceberg. We've got HNAS, we've got object storage that plays excellent into uh, backup and um, hypercomputing. So when we think about, sorry, when we think about uh, the consumption models that we've got in place for uh, every piece of our portfolio, you can acquire these through a direct purchase, which I know is is the case for several um, educational facilities. But we also have some higher education, higher ed facilities that we've encountered that have a preference for a, a longer term pay period. Again, through one of our many arms, Hitachi Capital, our financial arm, we can offer very, very complex, very, very straightforward or favorable options where you can scoot out a payment six months, you can scoot out a payment eight months, depending on your budget cycle. So you can meet your day today, your need today, but focus on, on funding later on. So uh, moving forward into our uh, VSP family, just broad uh, conversation here. You can start with something as small as our VSP E590. That's a very small box. You don't really need a lot of storage in there and it, it can even allow you to virtualize other systems um, behind it to extend the life of maybe some, some aging assets from other vendors. Or you can go all the way to our large enterprise um, uh, platform that can run a small country again. But they're all the same. They all come with active, best-in-class architecture that allows you to really use everything that you're paying for. There is no uh, dormant um, controllers or anything like that with our ecosystem. Beyond that, you've got uh, storage virtualization, which I just mentioned, allows you to extend the life of assets that are not necessarily Hitachi. Um, if you want to virtualize everything under the Hitachi brand, you can do that and manage it under a single pane of glass, which is op center I mentioned earlier. At the end of the day, eight nines, uh, when it comes to availability, unmatched in the industry. Uh, I think some of our customers, there's a specific customer out of Asia, they've had 10 years without an outage. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely something to, to note. And very flexible uh, when it comes to media. You can go NVMe, SSD, uh, hard drives. And again, we've got some of the best pricing you can think of for several of these things because we are a true manufacturer of the goods. A lot of our customers and competitors face some challenges throughout the pandemic with supply shortages. I must admit uh, that, that we had none. We had none and we started facing them very uh, not too long ago. And they are pushing out uh, deliveries two weeks. So it's it's unheard of uh, 
a year out and things of, of that nature, simply because we're a true manufacturer of our goods in our ecosystem of 900 companies. Beyond that, um, little speeds and feeds for those that are technical or like to uh, dive into the weeds. You've got, again, our, our smaller footprint on the left side of the house, and that's can still go all the way to almost nine petabytes and, and four million IOPS. And the larger scale one, which is for large enterprise or, or really complex deployments, you can go all the way to 33 million IOPS or 69 petabytes. It's, it's definitely the sky's the limit with this one. But to move beyond that, I wanna focus on what's really important. And that are, those are these, these three uh, guaranteed uh, side on scene, two to one data reduction that is obviously depending on the type of data that we've got. This is delivered by all of our boxes. And beyond that, uh, there is more that you can do. Obviously, we've seen, I believe, seven to one. Uh, and, and beyond that, in some cases, it all depends on the type of data. 100% data availability guarantee backed by a contract. If you lose uh, availability, there is uh, compensation behind it or additional hardware to continue to support and avoid that issue. We, we do this in writing because that's how confident we are in our um, deployments in our hardware. And then modern storage assurance, no gimmicks. This came into play with uh, a customer in the education department that um, uh, maximize your investment with this. It's essentially allowing you to extend the life of your investment for 10 years. You can add in upgrades mid-tier or as many upgrades as you like in those 10 years. You have a control over the price. You know what this is going to cost you moving forward. No ifs or buts. And you have control of when do you want to upgrade, how do you want to upgrade, to what do you want to upgrade. And we come in with, with fresh hardware to make sure that you've got the latest and greatest um, throughout that 10-year period. Beyond that, this is our Ob Center suite. Does a little bit of everything. You've got uh, light data protection with protector. You've got administrator to keep things uh, where they need to be, very easy to manage. Automator for those smaller teams that need a little bit extra hand. I know sometimes we're running on skeleton crews. This definitely comes in handy to orchestrate um, tasks and then analyzer to really ensure that everything is running the way it needs. Um, and beyond that, I wanna point out that this uh, software suite runs on every single box. Again, that's it's the beauty of it. You can start with a small box and go all the way to a large one. You will see the same operating system across the board. Um, beyond up, uh, up center, we have storage virtualization, which I mentioned. This is something we started quite a long time ago. And it's as simple as Hitachi can virtualize uh, boxes behind it. You can call that Pure, Dell, Hewlett Packard, um, pretty much everything else that's out there. We're vendor agnostic. You can use those essentially as, as dummy storage if you wanted to continue to extend the life of some of those assets. We also offer third-party um, service in case of those assets no longer being supported by the original manufacturers. Those are conversations that we can have to continue to support that and then virtualize under Hitachi with a single pane of glass through, through Op Center. Um, with that being said, we also op offer uh, threat detection and immutability on those other uh, pools behind the Hitachi gear. Um, I know I'm saying a lot, but I just wanted to let everybody know that we're out there, we're, we're known. Um, Gartner, IDC, Forrester, these are some of the latest uh, recognitions that we've received out there in the market, um, simply to show uh, the breadth of, of our abilities. And what I showed you was the hardware where you store all this data, manage, enrich, um, and do all, all of the, the cyber needs, essentially. But you need to come back to the real world. And a lot of times, that means going to a camera that's going to catch that footage, going to a sensor that's going to detect that movement. Whatever that is, this is the other side of the house with Hitachi Vantara, the sensors, the edge. Um, and we're agnostic. If you already have cameras, if you already have a system in place, we can still work with our um, hardware infrastructure, our storage, and our compute. But if you don't and you're looking for more of a one-stop shop, we can offer that as well connecting both both worlds, which is the, the cameras and also the uh, infrastructure behind it. So obviously multiple applications, industrial, urban, campus, which is education and commercial. We do this 
through um, a multitude of sensors and cameras and lidars that we we build and, and manufacture, and obviously this is going to offer potential insights into things like um, uh, parking spaces, facial recognition, uh, license plates, uh, people counting, all the way to, to temperature. Some of our cameras have been deployed in in the healthcare department as well, um, and now that we all well, have been to to through COVID. Our cameras have been there detecting folks with with different temperatures and and helping hospitals better understand um, the the level of threat with with COVID. But moving beyond this, I can tell you a little bit about the the insights that we're uh, trying to gather and then address the challenges. It's it's all going to boil down to your customer, which it's it's our students, the safety and security of the personnel the customer's experience is going to be improved simply because of the operational efficiencies that uh, come with uh, deployment of this nature. You can deploy teams whenever you see needs effectively, and you can avoid spending some resources on uh, some of those actions that might not be needed right then and there. So it, the control is uh, going to allow you to grow your transparency, grow your efficiency, and the way you communicate with your customers. It's very simple. You can do this through our VS, HVS, which is our Hitachi Visualization Suite. It, think of a geospatial map. It allows you to see what's happening when and where. You do not need to uh, be tied down to a computer. It's something that you can do on the go, as you can see. Um, single pane of glass, it's a browser-based application, and there is analytics tied to it. It's obviously something that you can see live, but you can also go back and look at previous incidents with our incident management tool and, and really hone in into what happened when and where. Again, geospatial tags as well are included in in the deployment. Beyond that, uh, like I said, you do not need to be tied down to a computer. There's a mobile app to it. So your team can know where to go, what's the next task, and, and how to get there uh, with the help of our mobile tools that can obviously be deployed uh, alongside your team to uh, access these events in a fast and secure manner. This is a great example uh, of a customer that uh, played into our agnostic um, method. We are not tied to specific camera vendor. We can work with whatever is out there. And there's a Houston local independent school district that uh, has been a customer for quite some time. They had a growing number of campuses and they needed to upgrade all their cameras to 4K. Some were 480, some were 1080. It was a mixed bag of resolutions uh, and qualities for the camera. And they were upgrading all of them to 4K. Essentially, the existing infrastructure, which was Hitachi, could not support their needs simply because of the immense growth of the data that was going to be coming in from those cameras and their expected growth of campuses and cameras that go with those campuses. At the end of the day, they were also informed that this was a 10-year budget cycle. They had to invest today and that must last 10 years. So that's where our modern storage assurance kind of played in and allowed them to have an idea of what this was gonna to cost today and all the way until the end of those 10 years, support, new hardware, refresh, everything included in the package. And we came up with a Hitachi mid-range. We didn't need to go all the way to, to our, our high-end uh, infrastructure. Our mid-range infrastructure can handle it, combined with NAS gateways. And we're currently supporting more than five petabytes used for both their production, their VR, and the storage of all of their CCTV, their surveillance video storage. This includes a non-disruptive platform upgrade scheduled at midterm, all within the 10-year price point. Uh, at the end of the day, the customer got what they needed in terms of, of budgeting. Uh, it came at a 50% lower cost than the other competitors that they were looking at, and they are enjoying excellent Hitachi support at, at this moment. That is not the only example that we've got. We've got examples of Examples across the world, think Austin Police Department. I'm not going to go through these. I'm just going to show them real quick. Uh, City of Istanbul, like I said, we're a multinational company and we deploy and bring these solutions from across the globe 
to figure out what the best solution is for, for your organization and, and bring the brightest minds together. Uh, we've got another one here in the US, Dublin. This is a safe city. They've got a myriad of, of edge devices, LIDARs, cameras, sensors across the entire city that are helping traffic, video, a number of, of items. But at the end of the day, the question is, what do you do with all this data? You've collected all this data, you've stored all this data. How do you keep it protected in today's world? And that's where our friends from Backup Technology, Michael Sante, is going to give us a little bit of his take. So with that being said, Mike, off to you. I'm gonna stop sharing. Sure enough, um, I appreciate that, Fabian. You took a pretty complex ecosystem and solution set and, and narrowed it down to something that's understandable. Sometimes Hitachi's uh, breadth can be confusing, but you did a great job. And Frank, thanks for uh, the insights into the data growth. I'm going to take an approach really to focus in on a Hitachi area where we've seen the greatest gains for our clients. And that's really in the Hitachi content platform. I'll talk a little bit more about the immutability and the built-in data protection. And one of the things we do at data at uh, Backup Technology, we do our best to eliminate companies need to do backup. So that's uh, where Hitachi Content Platform comes in. Um, I also wanna mention our data center is run on Hitachi. Uh, we've been using Hitachi for really all of our, all of our solutions for these 10, 12 years. I hate to think back how long it's been, but, uh, one of the great things is it just runs. It is set it and forget it, to, and it's uh, as good as, as we could imagine. A little bit about our company. We focus on the business approach, business solutions. So we've, we've completed over 250 business continuity and resiliency plans for clients. We've conducted over 1,200 uh, DR tests and business continuity tests, and we've done hundreds, probably thousands of BIAs, business impact analysis. So we take an approach of really understanding a business and working from that sort of business solution side. As, as mentioned earlier, we have 300 technicians that keep it all going, but the important part is making sure the technology is the right business fit for you. So uh, today I'm going to focus on, this is some of our services, but we're going to focus on the storage as a service, on-prem storage as a service, edge to cloud, and uh, the data intelligence side of it. We're a fully accredited global organization. A lot of our insights and best practices come from the fact that at any given time, our compliance officers are doing audits, managing audits, and we take those best practices and use those to our uh, clients. Um, but why are we really here? The changing role in the growth of unstructured data, right? We're talking about files, images, email, sensor data. Every, everything that's been built in the last five years is giving off data and something needs to be done with it. There's a reason you need it. So um, all of that growth is important. Specifically today, we're here to talk about kind of the video and the growth of video. Um, if you've if you've uh, set the set the table wrong, you could very well have a hassle of, of growing your video. So, in order to to, to uh, demonstrate this, I'm going to do a personal case. I'm going to do a case study, very personal to me. Right, I have five cameras around my house. One of them was acting flaky, so I bought a new one. Being a tech fan and uh, Amazon fan, within 12 hours, maybe 16, I had a brand new. I I replaced my 720p camera with a brand new 4k 60 camera paid 250 bucks for it greatest thing in the world within like i say 12 hours 16 hours i had it outside i had it implemented and i looked at the rest of my cameras and thought why do i have these low resolution cameras and then of course i looked at my own storage array and realized how much data i was producing and started scaling back the resolution and all the settings you need to do to make sure you store the data while simultaneously looking at how do I upgrade my storage. So there's a mini little, um, a little mini case study of my own um, side of it. But but what it made me realize is the cost of new cameras, if you have a thousand cameras, let's say, the cost of new cameras is almost inconsequential compared to the infrastructure required to support those, right? It's nothing you don't know, but if somebody at headquarters decides you need uh, 
let's say you need facial recognition, right? So the rule of thumb is like 12 megapixels between the eyes in order to do proper facial recognition. That means you may need twice or three times as many 1080p cameras to be close enough to get that image. Or, um, you know, maybe you're doing 4K. Either way, a business decision that drives a lot of storage to be um, consumed. You know, you're going from two gigs an hour up to 10, maybe 15. Um, really, that's where, uh, for, for our solutions, in comes the Hitachi content platform. And Fabian touched on it a, a little bit, but really, this is where we've seen great gains because of the whole ecosystem, really. The right data, right place, right time. I like to call it essentially, I like to call it deep, dense, and scalable. It, it can scale to any need. And what we can do with this is we eliminate data silos. We can centralize management, centralize role-based access. We have governance and compliance, built-in audit trails, a key built-in immutability. One of the key things with Hitachi Content Platform has always been touted by anybody who's um, any of the storage companies or Gartner or who's ever evaluated it has been their metadata and their enhanced metadata. When you do searches, the first search is usually across the metadata, all the details associated with that file. It might be location, it might, some of them are generic with every, with every video file or every picture, geolocations, but you can also comb through it with Hitachi Content Intelligence and enhance that metadata and make it even more valuable and more searchable. I'm going to um, stop there on it because it can be very, uh, eh, we could go down that rabbit hole and spend a whole weekend on a webinar for Hitachi Intelligence. Instead, I'm gonna kind of jump in and demonstrate some of the solutions. Um, this one is a uh, large supermarket chain. It really could be any organization with a lot of different campuses or silos of data. This particular one, 1,200 stores, they all had the picture before, would be all Windows servers, some type of backup locally. If, if corporate headquarters needed a chunk of data or a video file, it was being sent overnight. They're putting it in a package, literally sending it overnight to deliver it. Um, some of the key elements of this solution Afterwards is really the single integrated platform, the whole ecosystem, and we can share and protect all the data under one roof. So what we end up with here is essentially replacing the Windows server and the backup server. So, you know, 1200 Windows servers and just as many backup servers all eliminated. And what we have on there is an edge appliance or a gateway that keeps kind of buffers as much data as is needed locally while replicating all of that data offsite to our data center and uh, or to their data center in this case, they happen to have three. So they have an always available three cluster of HCP that runs 24 seven. Um, but what that gives them is the centralized management and control and governance of all that data, access to it and the rules in place to manage it. Um, this next one demonstrates a little better about some of the rules that we put in place. So this particular one is, is Midwest City and County. They have about 3,000 cameras and about six petabytes of data. And um, one of the ways they make the most of it is using object storage as a service. So given, as, as was earlier mentioned, this this platform is a software defined platform. So we can have a flash tier of an accelerated cloud area, good for flash restores, managing, monitoring data, editing the data, doing all of those things. But as data gets older, you need it less and less, right? But one of the keys is having that data immutable. So part of not needing the backup software is having this built-in replication and immutability. What that allows us to do is this line item where it says simple to manage, automated and policy-based, that is essentially the foundation of what we're doing here. You're setting up data protection levels for each type of data or for each section of data. You can have as many of these as you want applied, but what that does is that says, how many versions of the data do we need? Again, these are immutable objects. So when the data is written here, it can't be deleted. 
If I go in and delete a hundred files or a thousand files, it creates a new generation of that data that happens to say deleted, but the data is still there. Generation one, two, three, four, it's all there. If it gets encrypted, same thing. It either creates a new file or it creates a new version of the file that happens to be encrypted. And you roll back 20 minutes or an hour and bang, you're back to where you need to be. So being immutable means it never writes over data. So it only writes to empty data. So you're running administrative processes that clean and manage that data. So if it's deleted, the same with a backup rule, if it's deleted, how long do you keep it, right? Like the old days, how long did you keep the tape? How long do you keep it? Do you need it for one year, five years, 10 years? If it's deleted and you say keep it for 10 years, you keep it for 10 years. These rules are set and they run in the background and they manage the data across all your locations, all of your data sites. And um, really, again, with this one, six petabytes of data, they were having challenges just backing up that data from their depositories. And what we were able to do is eliminate dozens of backup servers and they keep, a, they keep, this one's kind of a hybrid cloud approach. They keep a certain amount of data at their location, certain amount at their data center, but then they also have it at multiple um, locations for object storage as a service where they're replicating it to some of our data centers. So that's the um, high level approach on that one. Frank, I ran through a lot of stuff pretty quickly, but I'm uh, ready to let you have it back and, and close it out. Sounds great, Mike. Let me share my screen. All right, folks, again, thank you for showing up and hearing us out. But what we've seen is that there's an increasing need for more and more storage, especially video. Hitachi offers some leading edge storage solutions from mid-range all the way up to large enterprise. And Mike and backup technology can give you compliance, peace of mind, um, and accessibility to your data. And together we create a team that you can count on. So again, thank you on behalf of Nordstar, Backup Technology and Hitachi. Thanks for attending. I know um, we mentioned in the invite, there was going to be a giveaway for a quarter uh, honey baked ham dinner. What we will do is we're gonna take all the names of the attendees, write them down, throw them in a hat, pick one out, and we will notify everyone via email uh, who the lucky winner is. So wow. again, thanks for attending. I think we have some questions in the queue. Let yes. me pop that open and see what we've got um, from Marie Grace. Uh, if we've co collected all the video footage from our cameras deployed around our campuses in a week from now, I need to review an incident in a particular classroom or location. Can I access that footage via Hitachi software you spoke about earlier? I think it was called VMS. I'll, Mike or Fabian, one of you guys want to handle that one? I can take it, Frank. Okay. Uh, yes, guys, that is definitely a capability of our HVMS. Um, it is something that we can do. You can look at our incident log and pinpoint specific incidents and details around it to then review obviously when you need it or tag it for it to be saved for a prolonged period of time. It is a, definitely a capability of uh, the system to be uh, deployed. Okay, great, thank you. All right, well, one more question. Uh, we are from Ira. We are at an early stage of our video adoption. Can Nordstar help with hardware selection and implementation of a video surveillance system? Yes, we definitely can. We, we work with a number of partners in that area that are very experienced with this type of project, and we can certainly help you with that sort of rollout and implementation. I think that answers that. Uh, no more open questions. So I guess we're done. Uh, unless anybody has any more questions. Again, folks, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate the investment of it and um, we will be in touch. All right, sounds good. Uh, Mike, Fabian, Frank, uh, thank you for today and all of the attendees as well. If uh, we, we have a couple more questions here, but uh, of course we value your time since so we promise this is going to be a 45 minute webinar. 
So uh, we have taken note of your questions and then uh, definitely we'll get back with you with an answer on that, uh, including the recording of this webinar. So just in case, if uh, you do have some questions for us, uh, please uh, send us over. You have our contact details and then we can go from there, okay? Gents, uh, thank you for your time and all of the attendees. Uh, enjoy your day. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye, Everybody all. have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, Thank you, everybody.